Good morning. Today, this is the first Sunday that we are permitted by the diocese to sing along with the hymns. There is a hymn insert in your bulletin, and you are welcome to join in congregational singing today. Our processional hymn is Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending as we uh, come into our Advent season. Please be seated. Welcome to St. Paul's on this first Sunday of Advent, the season uh, that we wait for the coming of the Lord. We begin our service in Advent with the blessing of the Advent wreath, and each week we light a candle on our Advent wreath, and so we will uh, do that now. And also, wel welcome to everyone in uh, the pews today. Uh, we have a snowstorm, so we're fewer in number, but mighty. And to those who are joining us on our virtual church service today, a reminder that if you'd like prayers prayed during the pr prayers of the people, please send your prayer requests on our YouTube chat line uh, early on in the service, and they'll be picked up and prayed at the end of the service today, at the end of the prayers of the people.
the blessing. And the blessing of our Advent wreath. Gracious God, let your blessing come upon our community gathered here before you. Bless us and our Advent wreath. May the light that shines forth from these candles illumine our way as we journey towards Christmas. May the light that shines from them illumine our lives as we wait in hope for the birth of the Christ child. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is the light of the world. Amen. Let us pray together. Holy and gracious God, we pray that on this first Sunday of Advent, as we light this candle of hope, so too will a fire of hope be kindled in our hearts. May we hold this hope gently as we are urged to stay awake and be ready for the coming of our Savior. As we prepare to receive the Christ child, may we be ever mindful of our love for you and yours for us. We pray all this in the name of Emmanuel. Amen. We begin with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. First reading, Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days, at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he, will, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is a name by which it will be called the Lord of our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 25, verses 1 to 9. And we'll say this together. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Second reading, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, 
verses 9 to 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day, we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love with, in love for you. And may be so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is Prepare the Way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, that all people shall see the salvation of our The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Happy New Year today. This first Sunday of Advent marks the start of a new year in our church calendar. We begin this year not with a cozy and welcoming message as we prepare to welcome Jesus at Christmas. Instead, we have an apocalyptic or end time passage. It's a wake-up call, a sobering kind of message to hear in this time of expectation in the season of Advent, which we generally think to be a, a season of cheer and preparation. Today we hear Jesus talking about the coming of the Son of Man and the signs that will take place before his return. The signs in the sun, moon, and stars, the roaring of the sea and waves, distress among nations. So much distress that people will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. And then they'll see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great power and glory. Jesus tells us that when you see these things beginning to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. As many of you have too, I have been watching the news in these last few days, these terrible floods in British Columbia. I have a sister, Judy, who lives in Abbotsford, which is the epicenter of the devastation. We've been talking regularly through these days. She and her husband's home, they're on slightly higher ground, so they're not flooded, but the devastation is all around them. There's mountain slides, land, 
mudslides two minutes behind them. The Sumas Plain is right in front of them. The RV center where you know, dozens and upon dozens of, of, uh, of RVs caught fire and the fire couldn't be put out. The smoke was coming over their house. The, these flooded plains, the landslides, homes and highways buried by water, a steady stream of sirens, fires that emergency vehicles can't reach, helicopters flying overhead, some of them taking people to safety. Several people have lost their live, lives. They've been buried by mudslides. It's a once in 200 year event, we are told, just as we were told that the heat dome that hung over British Columbia for weeks last summer, which resulted in the death of over 600 people, was a once in a hundred year event. And the wildfires in BC this year that caused so much loss and destructions and burned out entire homes, the smoke filled the sky for weeks. My sister in BC and hundreds of thousands of others have lived through a lot of apocalyptic weather in a few short months. Most of us like, would like to hide from these kind of events, cowering in our basement or flee to safety, away from fire or whatever it is that threaten our way of life. As I think about our end time passage today, I wonder how many of us, if we saw these things happening that are spoken about in the passage today, would actually stand up and raise our heads and go out there and give thanks that the Son of Man is coming over, just over our heads. And we wonder, when will all these things happen that Jesus spoke about that will signal the start of the end times? Will it be this year, 100 years away, 1,000 years away? The day is known only to God. As we await Christ's coming in a few weeks from now at Christmas, today we're asked to think about his second coming and whether we're ready. As we cross into the threshold of Advent, this ends of time passage reminds us to look forward to the fullness of time when he will bring about the redemption of the world. That's what Jesus is really speaking about in this passage, that the one who came to us 2,000 years ago as Emmanuel, God with us, will come again in fullness and will reveal himself again in our midst. When we hear this end times passage, we might wonder where is the hope in it? These terrible events, it sounds awful. And yet it's hope filled. Jesus is assuring his listeners and us that the healing of the world is at hand. He doesn't say how long this will be before it will happen, but he assures us that one day it will happen. And until that day comes, he tells us to stay awake, stay alert, and learn to pay attention to the signs of what is to come. For sure, this isn't a cozy, hospitable passage as we enter the season of Advent, but it's a message that also reminds us we live out our faith amid so many mysteries that we don't have all the answers to. Even in our daily lives, we aren't comfortable with mystery or not knowing. We worry about the future, how it will unfold. We live our life somewhat in the dark, not knowing what's ahead. We know he's coming, but we don't know when. We've been told what to look for as the second coming draws near, but will we recognize the signs when they arrive? Our faith calls us to accept these mysteries, to accept that we don't know everything, can't see everything, can't predict everything, and that we don't know, that we don't have to know what's going to happen in the days to come. Jesus' words invite us to let go of wanting to know all the details and to accept these divine mysteries and know that God alone holds the answers. Jesus tells us when we live with abiding faith that through God's grace we receive salvation, we'll find a sure pathway through this devastation and suffering, and that pathway is called salvation. And that salvation is a new beginning. Advent invites us into this time of waiting 
both for the first advent, his first coming at Christmas, and the second advent, his coming again at the end of days. And Advent reminds us that Christ is alive in each of us while we wait. We can walk with him and talk with him on our journey of life. And perhaps this is a third Advent, so to speak, that Christ is born in us too. That through God's grace, God lives within us. We are a sanctuary, a holy place for God's presence. Advent is about learning to wait, not knowing all the details or what tomorrow will bring, only that whatever it is, it involves sanctification and redemption. Advent invites us to stay in the present, knowing that a well-lived life throughout our life journey can lead us to that fullness of life. Advent invites us to keep our face turned in faith and hope towards the light that is forever on the horizon, and to remember that the light of the world, Jesus, will soon come at Christmas. Jesus doesn't stand at a distance, but is already with us, waiting for us to open our eyes to his presence that stays with us and lives within us always. This morning, I uh, went on to a site called Caring Bridge. Do uh, folks here know what that is? It's an organization that has a website that allows people to participate in and follow difficult health journeys for friends and families. Those, some will recover and many will not. Over these last several months, you may have heard we pray in the prayers of the people, in that pause where we can pray for people who are ill. I've been praying for my friend Joyce, who's a priest in the Anglican Church and is in her last days of life in hospice. This morning I read the most recent posting uh, on the Caring Bridge site, and it touched me deeply. And so I'd like to share part of that posting with you because it touches the essence of Advent. These are the words that were posted last evening. During Advent, we sing and we light our candles before dinner. Remember, this is taking place in a hospice. We light our candles before dinner and we sing. Here at Bridgepoint, I thought they'd take a dim view of our Advent wreath and candles. So I bought plastic electric tea lights. Joyce was able to sit up for a moment and we video called our family and we sang together. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the child of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. And she ends with this. In this season of Advent, sing tonight. Dispel the darkness. Invite the light. Amen. Together, we say our statement of faith as Christian people, the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You're welcome to stand, sit, or kneel as you prefer for our prayers of the people. Watchful at all times, let us pray with confidence to our Savior and Redeemer. In response to let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. In our cycles of prayer today, let us pray for the Church and all Christian leaders, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Andrew, our Diocesan and Deanery Bishop, Kevin, our Area Bishop and the College of Bishops of this Diocese, for Anne, our Metropolitan, for Linda, our Primate, and the House of Bishops. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we join Anglicans around the world as we pray for Aguirre, Episcopal, Anglica du Brazil. In our own diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. James Cathedral. In our outreach and advocacy cycle of prayer, we pray for All Saints Collingwood, its virtual drop-in programs, monthly friendship dinner, support of the local food bank, refugee sponsorship, and the work of its green team. We pray for All Saints King City, its provision of meals for residents of Crosslinks Housing, support of King Township Food Bank, and participation in local community outreach. We pray for All Saints Kingsway, its community garden, refugee sponsorship, out of the cold program, outreach among the poor and disenfranchised of their neighborhood, and its involvement in programs at All Saints. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Curtis Moses, Azal and Kishika Nazir, and Bill and Betty Nemerson. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, come soon. We pray that God may bring in his kingdom with justice and mercy, and that God may establish among the nations his scepter of righteousness. We pray for victims of our society throughout the world and for those who provide aid and who minister to them that you will be their help and defense. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come, come soon. soon. We pray that we may seek Christ in the scriptures and recognize him in the breaking of the bread as we live out his ways into our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come, come soon. soon. We pray for all who are impacted by COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, those who are sick, the dying, the grieving, the worried. And we continue to pray for all frontline workers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. come soon. We pray that God may bind up the brokenhearted, restore the sick, and raise, raise up all who have fallen. We pray today for those whom prayers have been asked. And you're welcome to name aloud or in the silence of your heart those who are on your heart today. Joyce, Allison, Eleanor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come, come soon. soon. We pray that the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and in the shadow of death. We pray for those who have passed in the, into the peace of Christ and Joy. for all who mourn their death. You're welcome to name aloud or in the silence of your heart, loved ones who have passed. John Brooks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come soon. soon that with all the saints in light, we may shine forth as lights for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come, come soon. soon. Let us commend the world to the mercy and protection of God. 
Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immoral, mortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Sandra will offer the names of those prayer requests that have come on our YouTube chat line. Okay, prayers are asked by Veronica Morgan for Neville, Garfield, Donovan, and Sharon. Jennifer Cador asks for prayers for Veronica, Tanya, Alton, Logan, Chantal, Olu, and Nikisi. Alzia Kennedy asks for prayers for Ricardo on this special Sunday. And Jackie Lawson asks for prayers for Michelle Harry, Sheila Lawson, Sharon Lawson, Jonathan Soto, and Eric Hamilton. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus come, come soon. soon. Together we offer our confession to God. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You're welcome to stand as we exchange the peace of Christ with one another and remember our online family. Uh, you're welcome to acknowledge and exchange the peace with them as well. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ, our online family. Could I ask, I notice we have not opened the windows this morning in error, those that are close to a window to just crack one open a little bit. Thank you. We're starting to get a number of people inside here now. We will have our offertory hymn. Uh, the offertory plate is not passed but uh, are uh, positioned at the back table at the rear of the church, you're welcome to place your offertory in, uh, in those plates. Our offertory hymn is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Jesus, the 
Let us pray. God of love and power, your word stirs within us the expectation of the coming of your Son. Accept all we offer you this day and sustain us with the promise of eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed the promise of your salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy upon us. Jesus, redeemer, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Give us your peace. The gifts of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to 
Thanks be to God. As you come forward for communion, uh, Mary, are you going to guide people uh, to come forward? Uh, just a reminder to socially distance, to apply the hand sanitizer before you receive communion. Receive communion and just step aside uh, a, a couple of meters, remove your mask, receive communion, put your mask back on and re-sanitize your hands to return uh, to the pew.
You're welcome to stand as the prayer after communion is said. God, for whom we wait, you have fed us with the bread of eternal life. Keep us ever watchful that we may be ready to stand before the Son of Man. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us today and forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome back some folks we haven't seen for quite a while uh, again since we uh, had closed uh, our, our church. Uh, welcome. It's very good to see you uh, again. Welcome back. Are there any announcements from the floor today? Oh, Tiffany. Uh, our virtual Christmas dinner is next Saturday, December 4th at 6.30 on Zoom. Um, in the back of the bulletin, we have the uh, events for the night, Christmas caroling, um, welcome and grace over the meal, the live auction, which is the hot topic for the night, uh, fellowship time, and then just blessings. So I just want to hope to see, well, I just hope to see everybody there. And the Zoom details are going to be coming out on Friday. And also another note, please like the Facebook page. St. Paul's has a Facebook page, if you could just like it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, be a follower of ours on Facebook. Uh, Tiffany uh, up, does 95% of the postings on our Facebook page, and she does a wonderful job of it. There's information posted unique to our church as well as links to other uh, interesting articles and information from the Diocese of Toronto or the Anglican Church. So please go like St. Paul's Facebook page and go visit it regularly, please. Our No Bake Bake Sale continues. If you would like to buy baked goods that are not baked and that have any calories, and if you'd like to bake some baked goods that you don't have to bake for the bake sale, you're welcome to do that. Uh, in order to purchase uh, from our virtual, virtual bake sale, you're welcome to make a contribution, put it in an envelope in the back of the church, mark No Bake Bake Sale, or go onto our website and donate through the Canada Helps button. It is one of the few ways we're still able uh, to have fundraisers and a little bit of fun while we're, we're at it in the church. You'll notice that this week our Christmas Advent tree is set up in the entryway to the church to collect warm hats, mitts, scarves, socks, as well as toiletries. And these will be divided up between Ernestine's Women's Shelter and Youth Without Shelter. And they're very glad to receive these items uh, through this outreach initiative of the church. So please remember to bring an item or two or whatever you can and put them, peg them to our Christmas warmth tree. A reminder that those who returned to the church were a scent free environment. Since this has been put in place a few weeks ago, I've had so many people say thank you that they too have scent uh, sensitivities. Uh, some people have said they really have even hesitated to come to church because they had problems with scents or had to sit in the very back uh, to try to minimize it. So uh, it's not just myself that's scent sensitive. We have, I've learned that there are, were many among us that are. Uh, let's see. In Advent, we're going to have a video uh, series through our Thursday night Zoom meetings on the Holy Land, and that will be at the front end of our Advent worship services and hymn sing through Advent. So please join in on Thursday evenings, and our book club continues. If you'd like to join our email, um, just get in touch with the church or Sandra Wilson.
Uh, let's see if there's anything else. You've announced the virtual Christmas dinner and the program. Are there any other announcements? I, I notice we have a, a couple of wardens with us today. If, you, if it's possible to stay for five minutes following church, that would be uh, wonderful if we could just connect on a couple of things. Um, our COVID numbers are going up a little bit. And so please take good care, everyone. Uh, mask, social distance, stay, stay safe, and continue um, to pray for our world and uh, for our communities and for one another. Our closing hymn today is Herald Note the Sound of Judgment. peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are.